I don't know if you guys mind, but I wouldn't mind going first because I had a moment sharing to someone that I was reading this book and it was like a learning moment. So um, I was telling someone here that I was reading, you know, we're reading White Fragility for our book club, this, uh, this book cycle. And they said to me, oh, is that why you started using the term people of color? And I was like, oh. I guess so. And they're like, yeah, so I don't know what's socially acceptable in America, but I find that really offensive. And I don't um, look at myself as someone not white. Like I don't categorize myself as not white. And that's what saying people of color means to me. And I would prefer if you said Senegalese or African or even black, so, and I was like, oh, so sorry. They, anyway, so yeah. I like that. So I thought I'd share wow. that because it's throughout the whole book and I started using it because I was reading the book. So I started using the language in the book and they're like, oh, that's why you started using that term. And they're so anyway, they were like, um, yeah, I find that really offensive because I don't categorize myself as not white. Hmm. Yeah. That's so, interesting. Yeah. I never thought of that at all. Like, yeah, that didn't even, occur to me there's so many things in this in general the more I've been researching about this book and then also uh reading this book but things that I just had no idea the language that I used would be taken in a different way than you know than maybe well maybe that I meant or that I don't know that I, I feel like there's just so many things in our language and culture that we just do that is not uh is is offensive to people but I don't know what maybe it is a, like they were like, maybe in America, like that's something that people say, but yeah. You know. Probably just she does very individual, right? She does also contextualize the book as it being Western and colonizers. I'm not yeah. sure about Senegal's history per se, but I definitely wouldn't use person of color when I walk around India because that puts me in a different context when discussing racial matters. And yeah, it's one of those balances that when... I went to Peru and learned about the Chinese slavery there. It blew my mind because I'm like, oh God, there's other histories around the world. So it's that matter of colonization and what we were taught in the education system that really puts us in a bubble that until you step out of that, you're like, oh, there's all these other cultural protocols. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like, since our shows also, uh, we have mm -hmm. listeners on 46 countries around the world it's just something to be mindful of that this book is written in um by the u.s perspective so yeah mm -hmm. what and that we're all story, within yeah. the western colonized state of mind of yeah. how we've been socialized that way definitely yeah i found the whole experience of this book uncomfortable <laughs> like <laughs> it was no <laughs> uncomfortable it was like the layers of like, you know, I think we talked about, you know, and they, I, she even talks about it in the book about like rationalizing your like, um, like, oh, well, my best friend's black and, uh, uh, or a person of color and like this person. And, uh, I dated a whole bunch of other ethnicities, like whatever it is. Like I started to do that too. Sarah touched on that. Like, and that part was like when the, when she mentioned it in the book, it was so like unnerving. You're like, oh, she knows I did that. <laughs> and then like, just along the way, just like, just, I, I said this a lot in my personal journals, but like it took tell about chapter five and chapter five was like my, like TSN turning point of like, that I could take in the information because chapter five was about like the good bad binary and it, it was, I think, really just was when she broke it down in those terms, like good people aren't racist and bad people are racist. And that's not true. Like there's all levels. There's a, we can't help ourselves that I finally could take in the information and really see where I am. Um, well, 
without choice, I'm participating in a racist society, but where I'm um, lying to myself and yeah. like where, where I could like almost uh, rein it in. Like there are things I could do differently. Not, not all of it's forced on me by my society. Like I'm just have a lot of blinders on as it turns out. Yeah. And that's uncomfortable to say. Totally. Like yeah. I, uh, um, so for me, my experience of this book was opposite though, because I read me and white supremacy first, which is mm -hmm. like not so like, I feel like white fragility from a white person to white people is, um, almost nurturing if you could say that in delivering the message because they know you know this isn't going to be easy white fragility <laughs> right and so they try to make it as uh the the message as digestible as possible and that is not the uh feeling you get when you read me in white supremacy and um which is fine right but for me to have that experience first i had my full blown white fragility uh, reaction to me in white supremacy and then reading white Supre fragility is almost like oh it's so nice to have it you know explained in this way to me like I don't know like as if this person I, I I feel like nurtured is the best way to put it but it's only because of my personal experience because I felt you know uncomfortable or upset from me and white supremacy um, again as because of the the recognition of the ways that you are racist that's what's something I was thinking about today. I put this in my personal journal is trying on the phrase, like saying out loud, I'm so racist, you know, and, and being okay with saying it because it's not that binary. It is the outcome of the society I was so socialized in. And until I can be like, yeah, racist. Oh, yep. Yeah, racist, racist, whatever. You can't not be racist or work towards not, you know, perpetuating racism. So um, my point is that I liked the the way that the message in white fragility was delivered, but the like it coddled you. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it, it felt yeah, Squiggy. it felt nice. But Squiggy and I were talking about earlier how we listened to he. You listened recently, just like last night, to the book on audio tape, Squiggy. Yeah, I crammed last night for this. Yeah, you did a cram sesh, <laughs> um, and the voice they chose to to do it is yeah. very like. Rock by white people, <laughs> you're gonna be okay. We know yeah. you're fragile, <laughs> and you're racist as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the voice is also, so like confusing with the content. The balance I found with people though is that once they've worked through that awkwardness or the uncomfortableness, then it almost becomes easy to recognize and you become comfortable with it mm -hmm. and it's definitely stemming off that disregard of that good bad binary so it's like okay i'm not evil and i've had to deal with this with uh feminism slash misogyny and like i am not an evil man though i would in one back in the day make a period joke or something like that mm -hmm. um but it's working through that awkwardness or that uncomfortableness or hitting that tsn turning point is then when you're mm -hmm. like okay I'm through this and even looking at how the last conversation with and how this one is hoping to go is that it's it's gets to a point where it's almost fun and it's weird to talk about anti-racism and self-awareness and self-reflection but also be able to smile and laugh and work through it and it's just weird once you break through that comfortable that uncomfortableness to be able to work on those things is actually productive and weirdly enjoyable yeah, yeah 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 like like once your blinders are off you see all this stuff you're like man i didn't even know and um it's such a great like what kj's saying is kim it's such a great beginning book to talk to for white people to read um who want to do anti-racism stuff i've talked to some people and um about this book i'm reading and a lot of people don't know what white fragility is like many of us didn't before the book and um it's just, uh, people actually want to talk about it, but it is funny, like, when you notice things, you're like, wait a minute, that, that's ridiculous, right? Like, um, I don't know, my husband hasn't read this book, but I've been talking to him about it, and uh, I'll be like, hey, this, this is ridiculous, right? And, like, we'll have a laugh about how ridiculous something is, they're like, oh, I gotta say something about that, or whatever, right? Um, book interrupted. 
Here's my interruption, or rather, a new hobby I, for some reason, have decided to do. I bought a 1940s typewriter, and I'm taking it apart and cleaning it up. And hopefully, it will work really well soon. Or maybe not soon, but eventually. On book interrupted. I've done some research about um, some criticism towards this book, but also just that, like, that now people are saying it might um, also reinforce stereotypes and it's very condescending towards black people. Um, mm. And because then now you're noticing and then you're going out of your way to do something differently that could be thought of as offensive. I don't know what everyone thinks about that, but this is just in some articles I've read. Like by people of color. Using oh. people of color, Sarah used that and ended up offending somebody. Right, like I don't know, like you know what I mean. Like you're saying something like that, where it changed your behavior, and maybe that wasn't. I don't know. Yeah, it changed like... my behavior, and then it offended someone. Um, but well, the thing I... is, I think the point of the book is it offended someone. I was talking openly about this book, and they were okay talking openly to me. And then I was like, oh, sorry, I won't do that again, and I'll bring it up on my show. And they're like, okay, great, thanks. You know, I, so I, I also think that like. Um, the society is so like it's so entrenched historically like um but this book is i think the if it only had one small uh mission is to get people talking about race to get people comfortable talking about race to get white people to acknowledge that um race is a factor in things and so um if they're now going about it all fucking white and like wrecking it then the whatever right but at least they're talking about it right at least the conversation <laughs> is now on the table and i think so anything that is um like a criticism of the book in in that kind of a category i think is um a criticism not necessarily a forgivable one but one that we can work with because i think the point was to to open the conversation, to begin the conversation where we talk about, yes, I see that you're different. Yes, society has been designed in a way to, based on what your difference is, keep you up or down or whatever, right? So um, nothing's perfect, right? And white people are totally gonna fuck it up once they get all woke about it and go about on their missions now to save everybody. <laughs> but um, at least they're trying, you know what I mean? At least they're talking about it, I think is, at least a silver lining anyway. Yeah, and I think also, I mean, what you guys were saying about it being an easy book to start with. Like if you start with this and then you go to something different and you learn more and you're growing and stuff, I think that that's the best way to do it as opposed to just reading this book and being like, now I know, now I'm, I know everything about Check. everything. So yeah, <laughs> that off the list. Check I off the see. list. I'm not racist or I am racist or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I think you have to like, check no. that you are. Yeah, gonna just, yeah I am great. So, it's, it's I almost... just like anything that's worth doing is going to be hard. You're going to do mistakes. Like you're going to make mistakes, right? Like if you're going to get good at anything, you have to, you're, you kind of stumble forward and every mistake you make, you get better, right? It's just, I think some people want it to be easy and it's not going to be easy. Uh, to change society so entrenched right yeah I think like to Lindsay's point like with your the research you found in some of the like criticism about how like I can totally see that I even noticed it in myself that all of a sudden like I felt like I earned this badge because I read this book that allotted me the uh opportunity to go out there and be like, I'm a changed woman. I'm different for myself. I think maybe that criticism is correct. Maybe there are some people that if we don't check ourselves and look at the motivators towards how we're stepping forward, there are some people that will read, there are some white people that will read the book um, and they'll go out there and yes, like to Kim's uh, like point, like, yeah, it is good that they're wanting to be an active participant in change, of course, but like check yourself. Because if your motivator is posturing so that you can put yourself back onto the binary spectrum of being like reinforcement good. of I'm a good person, mm -hmm. then maybe it is problematic, right? But if you're checking yourself and you're realizing that your motivator is stemming more from I know better 
therefore now I will do better. And I forget who uh, coined that quote, and I might be paraphrasing. It's Maya Angelou. Maya Angelou. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my most favorite person in the whole world. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like we can't help those circumstances. And in fact, I would applaud anyone who recognizes that they're knowing or understanding or learning differently and that they have perhaps a new lens, um, new perspectives brought about by a great book. I like the way that the author put it because she said um, that she imagines herself on a continuum and also like specifically pointed out that she's never going to be done or there or anything else. It's just a continuum. And as long as she's um, in every given moment working her best to kind of progress on the continuum, then she can count herself, I, I guess, good, worthy, whatever, but like count herself um, even successful. I don't know those words. I like as all of moving them in the mouth. right direction. Yes. Yeah. Because yes. I feel like all the words I just said were not, they were too final. And with this book, it was mentioned about the possibility of posturing, but like you just pointed out in this book, if you read this book, Hey, if you're taking the time to read a book, that's more than just sharing a meme. So that effort there, I find with social media activism is so lazy that the people that actually take the time to read a book aren't the ones that are most likely posturing about it. And then this book, if you actually read it, it puts you on a spectrum where you're not saying that, yes, I'm finished my job. It doesn't, the book itself doesn't give you a badge at the end of it. Mm -hmm. The book itself tells you that we're on this continuum, the spectrum, this moving forward. And that's why it is a good gateway book. And I, I don't mind it being criticism. I like critiquing it and writing in general, but it's almost like the, the pop music of anti-racism. Totally. Yeah. It totally gets a good and yeah. then like you can't overanalyze it because it's just pop music it's it's a short book it's a window it's a gateway and then yes you can go on to much heavier anti-racism books that is just far more in depth if you've enjoyed these video highlights listen to the full episode on our youtube channel or wherever you get your podcasts remember to like and subscribe and ring that bell to be notified when new episodes are published Find out more by going to www.bookinterrupted.com. On Book Interrupted.